The legendary electrifying mojo, as he's known to his radio audience in Metro Detroit, was spinning the usual discs one day at a Detroit R&B station, just ending an earth, wind, and fire set when the studio line rang. I picked it up and this little girl was on the line. She said, hey, mojo, tell me, were there ever any great black classical composers ever? It was such a stunning question. Um, one that I'd never thought about. I didn't know how to answer her, and I didn't want to lie to her uh, and say yes. I didn't want to tell her the truth because I didn't, I didn't really want her to know that I didn't know. But I decided it was better to tell her that I didn't know, and I would promise to find out for her. Mojo kept his promise and began one of the most enriching experiences of his life, discovering the wealth of classical music written by black composers. And he decided to write a book about what excited him the most about what he found. When the quest began, he left his job at the radio station rather than stop playing his newfound discoveries on the air. Management told him to stick to the format or leave, and he left. Johnson says he'll keep his book focused on three major composers. The first French classical composer, Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges, author of the first symphony written by a black composer, and the groundbreaking Concerto for Violin. That was written in 1775. I, I think it's uh, one of the great um, unexplored masterpieces uh, because what he did for classical music in Paris with the uh, Parisian musicians and the you know, French school of music, it became like the paradigm uh, that was uh, duplicated. I mean, people came along and say, like, why reinvent the wheel? It's already rolling. And the Saint George was uh, a guiding force. De Saint-Georges was born on the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe of an African mother and a French father. They encouraged his talent at a young age and eventually brought him to Paris in the mid-18th century, where he was considered among the premier composers of his day. He accepted with grace the withdrawal of an offer that he be appointed co-director of the Paris Opera, following objections registered with the Queen, fearing that it would be degrading to follow the orders of a mulatto. Historians say he had the most impact on the few other black classical composers at the time, most in Europe and in Brazil. Just before the turn of this century, another black composer gained worldwide attention with a composition that critics at the time say rivaled Handel's Messiah. It was Hiawatha by composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Taylor lived in London in the late 19th century, but his effect here in the United States, along with the Civil War emancipation of blacks, helped inspire a new generation of 20th century black composers here in the U.S. This new music formed part of the foundation for black music culture today by drawing from rituals in African culture, signifying offbeat melodic accents, call and response, and the ring shout. Taylor's groundbreaking work had a major impact on that development. But the one that had the, the biggest impact was William Grant Still. Samuel Floyd is the director of the Center for Black Music Research at Columbia College in Chicago. He says the Afro-American Symphony by William Grant Still is a benchmark in classical music history because it draws on African music traditions in a modern sense. Uh, the Afro-American Symphony, uh, which was performed first in 1931, uh, was the first major symphony to be performed by a black American. And uh, we can see in that work very clearly where the, the, the values of the ring shout uh, begin to come into uh, concert hall music by black composers. <laughs> In Michigan, the richness of black classical music is being celebrated regularly with performance series by black composers, including the latest Detroit Symphony Orchestra program spotlighting contemporary African-American composers. Leslie Dunner is a resident conductor with the DSO and the recipient of numerous awards, including one for Distinguished Achievement from the NAACP. Well, I think it's just another way of recognizing that African-Americans are involved in the full spectrum of of life that we have here in this country. There are very, very few African-American composers who have been performed um, historically. This is 
yet another way for us to do it in our own genre. We don't do it in sports because sports is not our area of expertise. We don't do it in medicine. We do it in, in classical music. Johnson, or Mojo, meanwhile, continues his research on his computer at home, using a variety of sources, including the Internet, interviews with music scholars around the country, and heavy usage of the music libraries at the Detroit Public Library and Wayne State University. He says it's like piecing together a jigsaw puzzle. Much of the information regarding uh, black classical composers is kind of like uh, written between the lines, and, and you have to go, you have to find so many lines and so many books, and and merge them together to come up with uh, what really happened. As Johnson's search continues, he says he's not sure when or if he'll ever revive his legendary Detroit radio status. Finding the richness in black classical music, he says, may have changed his life forever. WGPR Detroit. Look here, you know, something wild just happened. Uh, that was the music of uh, Le Chevalier de Saint George. He was a French African composer of violin music, and as a matter of fact, that is a concerto for violin. And uh, he was born in 1739. He died in 1799. Uh, he was a French aristocrat. He received uh, an aristocratic ed education in France. And um, uh, during his lifetime, he was also known, um, aside from uh, his musical um, uh, ability, which is an understatement, he was also the leading swordsman in France. It was said that during the lifetime of Le Chevalier de Saint-Georges, the man that could beat him uh, 
fighting uh, with swords had not been yet born. And um, the music um, that he made, he um, influenced so many um, uh, composers uh, like Mozart, like Haydn. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, this album, Concerto for Violin, simply uh, sets the standards uh, that have been adhered to uh, generation after generation after generation. And um, I was talking with uh, Josh uh, Cheeks over at Dearborn Music, and uh, he said they ordered more uh, of the St. George Inn um, when uh, I started playing them. And they ordered um, what was a, a sizable amount, uh, more than they normally ordered, and they thought it was a big order. In a few days, it was wiped out. Then they ordered more, wiped out. Now it's on order again. And that's true all over the Metro Detroit area. Suddenly, a new star is born on the classical horizon. Well, a new star was born, but he's been uh, uh, reborn. And his name is Le Chevalier de Saint George. Something wild just happened. Remember, I was telling you the story about Kaylin and his mother. And uh, they were listening to the radio uh, for that dedication. I told them it was going to happen. They were listening. And uh, they gave me a phone call, and they're here on the line right now. And we have on the line right now uh, uh, his mother, Stephanie, and also Kaylin. Hello there. How are you doing? Hi, Mojo. This is Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. How are you doing? Hi. Oh, we're doing great. We were just listening to the dedication, and for the first time, I sat down and listened to an entire classical piece. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no, it didn't hurt you, did it? No, it didn't hurt at all. Not half as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> Um, Kaylin wants to talk. I, I hear Kaylin in the background. See, yeah. Uh, what's up, Kaylin? Hello. Hello, Kaylin. What you doing? Well, I, I'm t I'm doing what I told you I was gonna do. Um. Uh, I heard the song. You did? Yeah, and and I heard my name on the radio. Well, I told you I was gonna do it for you when when oh. I, when I saw you in that store today. I said, Kaylin is one of the brightest five-year-olds I ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud of you, Kaylin. I know. And, and man, I, I just want you to stay on it like you are right now, man, because you can do anything in the world you want to do, Kaylin. Okay. You know the future belongs to you. One day, if you want to make classical music yourself, if you want to be a composer, who knows? I, I might be talking to... Uh, oh, the, <laughs> I was talking to my mom. Yeah, I know. So, so Kaylin, tell me, man, are you in school yet? Yeah, I'm already in school. I had, I, I had three schools. Uh, first, now I have my new one, Saint Scholastica. Really? Yep. So, so tell me, what's a day like in the life of Kaylin? Huh? What's a day like in your life? Uh. -oh. Well, sometimes we get to play, sometimes we don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the computer room. We play computers. Oh, uh, you play on computers? Yeah. What do you think about computers? I, I, you know, we can type up words. Really? On computer? You can type on the computer now at five years old? Yeah. Well, look, man, I, I knew you were brilliant, but, uh, like, wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. So, like, when you grow up, what do you want to do with your life, Kayla? What do you want to be? Everything. Well, you can be everything, Kayla, and I'm really proud of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it all, Kayla, just like that. I don't know. Just like this. Huh? I can do it. All the job, just like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Kayla, so tell me, you, 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 you have turned your mother on to classical music. How does that feel? It feels okay. It feels okay. Yeah. What, what was she doing while it was playing this time? I don't know. Uh, uh, did she look like she was enjoying it? Yeah. Really? She said. 
Uh, classical music is kind of nice. <laughs> what did you tell her? I said, yeah, it is all right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you so. <laughs> uh, 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 did you say I told you so? Huh? You said I told you so, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that was my mom said it. Well, look here. Tell me this, Kayla. The first time that uh, that uh, what did she? What did you tell me today in, in the in in the uh, bookstore? <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, my, um. When I was listening to that classical music, my mom changed the channel. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> what what did you what did you say to her when she changed the channel? I said that wasn't nice. She <laughs> said, said I want to listen to some jazz. She said, Oh no, not Mojo again. Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is, is that what she said, Kayla? <laughs> Kayla. Huh? So, so like, uh, what did you say to her then? Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, well look here, Kayla. I, I, you know what, man? I, I'll tell you. you. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna go to um, a Dearborn Music tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to buy you about five classical albums, five of the top albums that I play here uh, at night. I'm going to get you, uh, Le Chav well, Chavier de St. George is out right now, uh, unless they have it tomorrow, uh, the one that I'm playing now. But I'm going to make you a tape of what I'm playing now, and I'm going to get you William Grant Steele. I'm going to get you Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Uh, oh. You like that? Yeah. And I'm going to get you... Uh, tomorrow I'm off of school. Really? And my mom is off of work. <laughs> well, well, look, I'm going to get you some Mozart, and I'm going to get you some Beethoven, too. So you have a, a, a wide range to choose from, okay? Okay. You like that? My mom heard that, too, on the radio. <laughs> she did. We can hear the speech on the radio, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm doing? Uh, I, I, I'm recording this for you, so when I, when I see you again, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a copy of this interview, and uh, you can keep it with you always, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well look here, Kaylin. Uh, I have your number. And uh, I'm going to get back with you uh, uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to find out, you know, what day you can uh, pick these things up or how we can get them to you, okay? Do you, okay, do you know where Southfield is? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. What, what, d no, no, don't give your address now, okay? <laughs> the address. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that, Kaylin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. But 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 I tell you what, I, I have the number. I call back when we're off the air, and I get all that information, and I, I make sure you get these things in the mail. Any questions you want to ask me? <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you take care of yourself. And uh, as long as I can, I'm going to keep this music on the radio for you. Okay. And... Uh, and and because I, I think it's really important and I'm really proud of uh, the I'm proud of who you are. Uh, I'm proud of you. I think you're going to go very far in life, Kaylin. You just uh, uh, you just stay the way you are. OK. OK. And uh, hang on those computers, too. OK. OK. I'm going to play another song from uh, the St. George for you. All right. I wrote down a song. I wrote down one of your songs. You did? Yep. Well, look here. You want to say hello to anyone, any of your friends on the radio? Yeah. Okay, go on. Sure. Okay. okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, you can do it now. Uh, I'll give you a minute to get it together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say hello to Keontae. That's one of my friends. Okay. Keontae? Yeah. All right, Kaylin. And Kaylin, here's uh, more of uh, Le Chevalier de Saint George. Who knows, one day maybe you'll become a classical composer. I will. You might. <laughs> and I'll be listening to the music of Kaylin Whitfield. Okay. And they'll say, and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, huh? I did want to be a singer. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe one day I'll see you at Orchestra Hall, okay? Okay. Well, look here, you know what? Huh? Um... 
a, a classical composer, uh, Bobby uh, uh, McFerrin, is coming to town. Uh, he's coming to town on April the 10th. April the 10th? Yeah, he's coming, he's coming to Orchestra Hall. He's going to be playing with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Would you like to go? Yeah. You'd like to go? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to get you tickets, you and your mother tickets, and uh, you'll be there at Orchestra Hall to see Bobby McFerrin in concert. You'll get a chance to see uh, one of the great classical uh, composers and conductors uh, live there on stage, and uh, you'll be at Orchestra Hall. Yeah, my mom heard that too. <laughs> you, you, you like that? Yeah. Okay, you think you'll be able to talk into going with you? Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Kaylin. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Uh, Kaylin. Huh? I tell you what, I'm going to let you uh, become a disc jockey, too. I want you to say, this is WGPR, and now here is St. George. Okay. This is WGPR. And now here is St. George. Now, and now here is St. George. <laughs> I can hear it on the phone. You did a great job, Kayla. All right, you yeah, take. I oh, know. Okay, bye bye. Bye.
Thank you. 